Yo, what's going on guys? Hope everyone had a great week. Haven't made one of these software developer videos in a while, so it's time to do another one. This video, we're gonna talk about what exactly you might work on if you decide to go into software. So many of you watching may still be involved in academics, whether it's being in school, being prepared to go to school or whatever it is or whatever stage you're in, but doing software in an academic setting is very different from writing software in a professional setting. So this video, I'm just gonna go through six, six common areas that software engineers might work on. Also random note, this is six in Chinese, so if you ever go to like a restaurant and you wanna seem super cool, you can order six dumplings like that. All right, just random side note. Without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, first one, let's just do the easiest first, and number one is gonna be bug fixes, and these are unavoidable. Something went wrong in the code, maybe you missed this really, really edge case. This area, pretty self-explanatory. One point I just wanna make is that no one, and I mean no one, 100% of software engineers, no one writes bug-free code. There are bugs all the time in every single software that we use every day. We just have to accept it. This is exactly why we have our packages updated for Linux, or we have Windows updates or Mac updates. Everyone is always improving and fixing bugs all the time. I think it's funny when people get upset that, oh, there's this problem with Twitter.com or Facebook.com is not working. What you don't realize is that behind Facebook.com is just another set of developers, just like you working on that code. And they're not gonna be writing bug-free code. So just give everyone a break, all right? Ideal way of fixing this, which is much easier said than done, but you should write a test which demonstrates the bug and fails before you fix the bug, then you fix the code and the test should pass and you should be good to go. Okay, so that's just number one, bug fixing. Number two on this list is gonna to be touch-ups or some people call it polish, which is another essential but sometimes a little less sexy part of development. Touch-ups usually don't affect the raw functionality of your software, but it's just to make things look good and give it that finishing touch. Usually if you're working heavily with product managers or you're working heavily with designers, they're gonna want you to touch up all of those visuals really well. The color is not right over there or this animation speed is a little bit off or our spacing just doesn't quite look right. So all in all, this is also pretty simple. My message is just to respect your coworkers, respect the designer, respect the product people, let them do their job. They're trying to design the work and you as an engineer have to be responsible to do polish and do these touch-ups when necessary. Do you guys think Apple got to where they are today by ignoring touch-ups? Touch-ups are pervasive throughout everything, okay? It's visual all the way down to hardware. So just touch up your work, pay respect to that. Okay, we're on to number three, which is new feature. New features are kind of cool because you're adding a new functionality to an existing project. They can be really small or become really big, but it's usually a pretty fun thing to work on. Features are usually done by a single developer. Normally, if something takes more than one developer, it's usually a much bigger scope than just a new feature. Examples of this could be like um, brand new searching functionality on your web page or a cool new settings or level in your game. New features are always required to make whatever you're working on better, make the software better or make the product better, but just be very careful because adding new features too quickly is the best way to incur technical debt, which leads us into number four. The fourth thing that software engineers usually work on is something called refactoring. Refactoring can really be a hit or miss. It could be pretty fun to rework some of the code or you might want to kill yourself. With refactoring on the outside, from everyone else's point of view, not much changes, but the whole point of refactoring is that internally you're making things a lot better, even if you can't see the results on the outside. Refactoring could come about for many different reasons. Perhaps someone left and left a large amount of code 
unattended to, which needs to be refactored and understood, or maybe the software just went like down the tubes and it just needs to be reworked. The key thing about refactoring is that it should be a very iterative, constant process. You don't want to build it up and then have to refactor a huge chunk of software. That's always bad. Like, remember to be a good engineer or be a good coder, if you see something wrong, just fix it right away. Refactoring and reworking is a constant process. And if you just let it pile up, it's going to be a really bad time. If some software has gone really bad, rewriting it is 99% of the time, not the right choice. You have to refactor and rework it. So just be cognizant of that. And remember that the first time you write something, it's not going to be very good. Even the first five times you write it, it, not, it might not be very good. So this is just the constant process and really value it. Okay, we're at category five now, and this is going to be performance and optimization changes. This type of work is normally a little later stage or late game, but if something's already working, but it's not quite performant enough, you might have to do some kind of optimization work. Your task for this type of work is just to improve the performance of an existing feature or application. The key takeaway of this part is not do it too early. I'm sure everyone has heard of pre-optimization and that's very bad. The only thing that makes optimization even possible is that if you can measure what it was before and compare it to what it was after. And if you can't even measure it, there's no point in trying to optimize it. Performance and optimization changes are also very big in scope. They can be from very small and they can also be very large changes. It can be as small as just adding a couple missed indices on your database. Maybe you want to cache a couple key calculations and it can go as big as you maybe have to refactor a ton of code to get the level of optimizations you want. All right, last one, number six number six, and we saved the best one for last, but this is going to be green field projects. This means we're starting a code base or a new project entirely from scratch. And this is really rare, but also really fun. This is a really cool and exciting type of work. And it usually happens where this technology doesn't even exist right now. And you've been tasked to just start it fresh or green field. Even though this is really exciting, this type of work also comes probably with the most responsibility. So if you're tasked with this, make sure to break it up, set some milestones, make sure to talk with your team, right? It's a, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of responsibility. The main reason why this is fun, starting a project from scratch is that you really don't have any legacy code to worry about. Everything you write is new. It's just really fun. You make every single decision. You have no dependencies on this old crappy code that's been sitting there for a while. All I would say is that when you're doing something like this, if you're working on a greenfield project, just make sure to do as best job you can because it's only greenfield once. And the next person to come along, you don't want him to say, oh my God, this code is so crappy because that's going to be your crappy code. All right, guys, that was the end of the video. Six basic areas or topics that you might work in or be involved with if you decide to go into software. This is not a comprehensive list. I just wanted to hit six big categories and let's just recap it really quickly. First one is fixing bugs. This always happens. There's always gonna be bugs, so just accept it. You're always gonna be fixing bugs. Touch-ups is sometimes a little more relevant for consumer facing applications or people that write code that is actually visual, but just wanted to put this on the list because you have to pay respect to the touch-ups if you want to build software that makes any money. So always respect this part if you're working on it. Third, we had new features, which is always a lot of fun, more fun than fixing a bug. Probably just be very careful about adding these too quickly because it could incur a lot of debt. Number four we talked about was refactoring code. This should always be an iterative process that's happening all the time. If you see it, just fix it and don't let it pile up. Okay. Refactoring. Number five was performance or optimization changes. These can be pretty fun because it's kind of like solving a puzzle to make something perform better. Just make sure you measure things well and don't try to optimize things when you're not ready for it. Last but not least, we had green field or new projects. These are the most fun. You don't have to deal with anyone else's code. 
just make sure if you have the cool opportunity to work on one of these projects, just do the best job you can and just communicate what you're doing because people are gonna be looking at your code for a long time after you write it. All right guys, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Gives a little bit of insight on what you might potentially work on if you're gonna get into software. Please just drop me a question. If you have one, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more super cool videos. Or yeah, you get it. All right, see you next week.